helps us to get a better result. We get more personality. We get a lot of things worked out early on. We make sure that we can uh, deliver what the story, the characters can give you what the story is asking them to give you. And so today I just wanted to uh, talk about sculpture and what we do, show you some of the stuff that I've worked on in the past. Uh, and then uh, I'll give you a little bit of a abbreviated demonstration of sculpting, stuff that we did for Good Dinosaur. So to start with, um, we, we do many different kinds of sculptures. These are expression sculpts from The Incredibles. And back then, we th this is actually a very large sculpt. Those aren't just far away. <laughs> but this is Bob from Incredibles. And these are expression sculpts above him. And even, even for stuff like how the characters move and the expressions they make, we, we help lay out what the face has to do uh, so that we can give this to the modelers and they can, they can put controls on them so that all of that can actually happen and it happens the way we want it to happen and look. And that's just another view of the same thing. In the beginning, we didn't scan our sculptures, uh, we, but we did have a system where we could put it directly in the computer. And that's why we had to make it so large, because the, we, were, we were actually having to input it one piece at a time, one point at a time, by, by drawing on the thing. But now we scan them. And this is a Married Life Carl from Up, and we needed to get uh, all these different stages of both Carl and Ellie growing up and we needed to make sure that they looked like they were the same people, that you could see them going through changes in their lives and that there was this appeal, especially for that opening bit of the film. And there's Ellie. And so you can see there's a huge personality difference between the two that shows up in the sculpture and that's very important. Um, we want to make sure that when people are using these sculptures in the future at the studio, after I'm done with them, because I do it very early on, that not only are they being used for modeling, but animators put them on their desk and it helps them to be inspired and kind of get, feel the character uh, that these guys have. And so, Ellie is really, you know, very forward. She's, she's challenging people, she's looking forward. She's got her mouth open, her eyes wide open, she's not shy at all. But Carl has his hands against his sides, and he's, he's very shy, and he has kind of a little scared look on his face. He's still, light, he's still smiling, but he's nervous. And then, I, I'm sorry, I think I called these married life. These are the young ones. And we refer to these as the married life, Carl and Elliot. So this is Carl as a young man. Uh, Sometimes we put on details like this balloon, which was actually a balloon that I coated in plastic so it looked like it would float. And we have Ellie. And she could, uh, she, the same personality is there, but you can see that she's starting to mature and things are happening with her. I don't have the old ones here because I'm going to move on to other things, but we did, we did the old version of these guys too. And this is, this is uh, Mary's mom, Eleanor, from Brave. And, uh, there's a lot of complicated things we had to figure out with a lot of these characters, sometimes clothing and everything. It's the first stab we take at it with sculpture. And here's a drawing that Tony Ficilli made. Uh, he's, he's a great Pixar artist and a Disney artist as well uh, for Fergus. And then that's the sculpt I did. And uh, sometimes in the process we make changes. We change the weapon, we made it a little more Scottish in the costume, but it's basically the same spirit. And then Fergus himself, once this was done, we started making changes down the line, but this launched everything. And here's, these are the stages we, how these sculptures are made, and this is some of what I'm going to show you today live. But uh, this is one of the lords, this is Dingwall. Every sculpture starts with an armature, and the armature is really important. It's not just for holding up the thing, but it, it helps to start the process of thinking about how the form is going to look. And if you're doing it right, you'll be able to see a little bit of personality in, the, in just the armature. And then from there it just gets built up. I often will add fingers and other details. The armature continues to evolve and then we get the final one. And then that goes off and gets scanned and built on the computer. 
This is Meredith, same process. A lot of times details get added again. I made a little bow and arrow out of wood, uh, just so that we had something there. And this is George from Up. He was one of the helpers that took, uh, was trying to take Carl away from the house. And this is Doug from Up. So I took four different pictures. He has all the same anatomical stuff that you'll see in a real dog, but his, his torso is just a lot lower. He's a lot rounder. And uh, for him, we actually did a number of sculpts too, but most of these are just, I'm just showing you one version of them. Oops, I'm sorry. And then this is from Presto. Do you guys remember Presto with the magician? Yeah. So this is Alec. And we, we did three different sculpts for him. So even for the shorts, we'll do sculpts. And uh, but the one the one early design we were doing, and one of the things about the whole film is that he's angry. So we decided to do the angry one first. And uh, we uh, these these eyes are ball bearings that get cast um, into these polyurethane, these plastic balls. And sometimes the eyes are so big and they're squeezed together that I have to make them intersect like that. And it doesn't look like it would work, but it gives them exactly the right look. And then, this is for the good dinosaur. So this is Spot. This is uh, some sketches from Matt Nolte. And everything starts with sketches. Uh, sometimes it's, it's very rough. Sometimes I get a lot of different kinds of sketches. And I have to interpret based on what I've heard from the director and the script and everything. There's other times it's spelled out because it's been really well worked through and they understand it. And, I'm, I'm, at the very least, three-dimensionalizing it, but a lot of times I'm helping them to figure out these forms, too. And so, this is what Spot became. <laughs> I put a bunch of debris in his hair. When you see the film, you'll understand. <laughs> and there's another view of him. And uh, there's a, there can be, sculptures can be, uh, there can be so many that we make for these films. I, there was 115 clay sculptures that were done for Ratatouille. And uh, some some of the films we do need far less. I mean, I think there was, I can't remember, I think one of the uh, Cars films had a dozen or so. So it can vary a lot, but usually it's around 50 sculptures. So today, I'm going to be doing Butch. And uh, Butch is uh, one of the T-Rexes, the biggest T-Rex we have in the film. And uh, this is another Matt Nolte uh, sketch. And uh, there were many things when this was done that we were still thinking about as to, as to what, what, what we wanted to give him. Because he's, he's not just a regular T-Rex. Uh, the world has changed in our film, and they've changed, and so he's much more like a, like a cowboy. Like, as if he, we wanted him to look like he was riding a horse, but the horse was actually him. So, so you'll see some of those changes as I go into the sculpture. And a lot of times we get multiple sketches, and this is one of the early ideas, uh, how we could make it like he's riding a horse, because he's almost like a horse and rider here. He's gotten much more vertical in the chest. Uh, T-Rexes are very horizontal. Uh, and I helped on this film a lot because I'm also a dinosaur nut, so it was a real treat for me to do this stuff. And uh, so I would consult and try to advise on how, you know, what we could do. Pixar always does tons of research, for our characters and for everything in our film, but we do it because we want to know what we're cheating. Because we always know we're going to cheat. We're always going to do something to make the film, the story, work better. So anyway, from here, um, this be it. I'll just show you some things. I'm going to put this over here. So these sculpts take me, the one for Butch took me three weeks to do from start to finish. So I'm not going to be able to show you that kind of thing, but I can show you the stages that we worked in and do some sculpting to show you. So this is my replica of the armature that I built to make Bush. And this is just aluminum wire. I, I like working mostly in aluminum. Some our other sculptor, Jerome, often welds his armatures together. Everybody has a very particular way of doing it. Um, there's, see if you can see this. Yes, you can. So here I put toes in and I've given him all the structure he needs. It's very strong. 
which is very important as I'm working it. Um, there's enough flexibility that if as I'm going forward, I can still you know, change where something is, change the position of it. Um, the thickest armatures, the th thickest parts of the armature are always holding up the most weight. It's a lot of engineering that goes into it. And then the stuff that has less weight are, are thinner armature. It's thinner armature wire, so it's more flexible. But when I'm doing this, I have to think about not only where it's strong, but where the middle of everything is going to be. So there's a lot of imagination. You, know, you don't know exactly what you're going to get as you're working on it, but you do your best guess and try to make it so you have plenty of room to make changes. And from here, let's see. we'll go to the next stage. So that's <laughs> and that isn't what I normally put on these things. But this, this, is a, this is the middle stage that I have. And one of the things you saw earlier in some of the other sculpts is that sometimes I do this stuff that's called displacement. So this is actually a urethane foam. And if there's big masses that aren't clay, I want it to be lighter and more rigid and also help me to understand where the forms are going. And so that's what you see here. And this isn't the normal kind of clay I use, but it is a, it, it's, it's not the exact kind of clay I use. We always work in oil-based clay. And oil-based clay never dries out. So we, even if we get a sculpt done and we think it's exactly what we want, but we haven't cast it yet, then a year later, and this has happened, we might come back in and make major changes to it because the story has asked us to do that. So, as I sculpt these things, I'm just, I'm thinking of, two, of, of several things. One is getting the weight right, getting the thicknesses right. Um, at a certain point, I go completely automatic. I start out thinking of these things very uh, structurally, very kind of mechanically, lots of, lots of thinking going into uh, kind of a mathematical plan of it. But I love it, and I, and I work for the point where I'm not going to be doing that anymore, that I'm just feeling it through, and that's what we, that's where I want to go. But a lot of this is just chunking on the pieces and trying to get the weight that we're going to see later. And see what you're seeing. Okay. I have a whole host of tools that I've been uh, using since Nightmare Before Christmas, which is one of the other Disney films that I worked on. And uh, that's also something that's very individualized. Uh, you know, Jerome, the other sculptor at Pixar, he has his own tools. And it's the same thing. He's had them for years. Little by little, he learns what works best for him. But we use lots of, lots of tools, mostly for the details and as we're shaping stuff. that I like to work, and you see a little, you saw a little bit of it on The Incredibles, is I like to think of plane changes. Um, Butch's final sculpt, which you'll see later, has a, has a lot of plane changes. Like, a curve is not just a simple curve, it's not a circle. Um, it has biases, it's, it's, it's got more bulge on one end, and, and uh, it might be straighter on another end, but it also just has these places where it actually just breaks, and it goes from line to line to line. And um, it's a good way to start giving the form character. And the more plane changes you have, the more uh, the, the harder the character might appear. For something like uh, like Russell in Up, he didn't have a lot of plane changes because we want him to look soft and round and like a little kid, but also like somebody who just doesn't have any strength or he doesn't have a mean body, you know, bone in his body. The shape, shape says so much uh, psychologically about a character. It, it gives us impressions that, that we don't even know why we're, you know, why, why, a lot of people wouldn't even know why it's making them feel a certain way, but, but we work on that to try to get those forms to help sell the personality. 
And as I said, Butch took about three weeks. Sometimes these characters take um, just a couple of days, but it's a, it, it, it falls within that range. And some of that time is getting it up in front of the director. Um, we, we bring it to a certain stage, and before we're done with it, we put it in front of the director, and we want him to see what we've been working on, and to make sure that you know we're sticking with his, his vision of, of the character. And a lot of times there's surprises. We might think it was going to look a certain way, but as we explore it, we find things work better another way. When I'm doing this stuff, Kind of, when I get into the automatic mode, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of the character as a real, the sculpture as a real living being. And, uh, and I'm kind of just trying to do the job uh, that I find really exciting, which is bringing it to life and to kind of meeting the character for the first time. It's like, it's like this, we've been talking about you know, a certain character, uh, like Eleanor or something from Brave, and, and we think we know what she looks like. But, but until we get her in 3D, we haven't met her, we haven't seen her in person in a way. And so it's what makes sculpture very fun to do. So you're creating these living things in a way. So probably you can see why this takes a while. <laughs> why it can take me three weeks. It's a lot of stuff to lay in. He'll just keep getting heavier and heavier as I work him. My, uh, my office at, uh, at Pixar is just full of junk. <laughs> it's got, in addition to lots of different kinds of clay and tools and boxes full of things and um, plastics and wire and everything, I have I must have about 50 sculptures from various stages of Pixar, of, of the time that I've been at Pixar. And um, that's a lot of fun. I, I need to clean it up from time to time, but a lot of times that's the best way I work, is just having things everywhere. It inspires me. So at this stage, I am uh, not trying to think about detail. All I'm thinking about is silhouettes and, um, and the biggest forms that I have in the body. So I'm, uh, things like wrinkles and um, eyebrow detail, whatever it might be, even toes and fingers and stuff. I'm, I'm not trying to think about that stuff. I want to think about the basic gesture. so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'll spend some time on the head just so that if we run out of time, we can at least get the look of his face. But you will see the finish. I have a finished one waiting, and you'll see it. One of the other things about Pixar is how collaborative it is. Um, and every stage is that way. So we have lots of artists that are contributing ideas to everything we do. And we want it to be like that. You know, we want to have as much input and as much uh, impressions from people when they're seeing the work. Um, you know, how, does, how does a piece make them feel? How does a, how does a sculpture make them feel? And does it sound, does it look to them like they thought the character sounded, how, how the character sounds when they're heard or pitched? When you do as much sculpture as I've done, because I've done almost 500 sculptures for Pixar alone, um, it's a, your, the hand strength is very important. Something that builds up over time.
So a bigger tool starts to start to come into play when I'm doing when I'm trying to flatten out these forms. I try to do something that'd be harder for my thumb to do. Butch has a very prominent jaw, very strong jaw. And uh, trying to make sure that that shows through. Sometimes I will sketch in details. Um, in this case, I would probably just start to imagine where his mouth is going to be. It, it helps me to understand if I have enough weight and material. And he has kind of this funny smile. It's like a T-Rex smile. Crocodiles seem to have it too. Um, and I want to get just the right amount. T-Rex is the, the lower jaw and the front is usually not as wide as it is with Bush. Butch is a tough guy, he's a cowboy, one of the kind of give him more of that feel. So that's working pretty much for me for detail, so I'm gonna start building on that. At this point I'm starting to I want to see his eyes, where they're going to be. So I'm building out his brows. I don't need to see the actual eyes yet, but I do want to know where they are. This had to be on this side. <laughs> So the shapes are often complex and want it to be complementary. Um, so you might have you might have something that goes from very wide to narrow, and then you might want to complement that with something that goes from very narrow to wide, and they kind of intersect. It, it's, it, it gives it a kind of energy, uh, a design energy that you might not have otherwise. We try to avoid things that are too parallel, because these are living things. We don't want them to look mechanical. Main characters, human characters in particular, can be uh, challenging because we want them to look familiar. We want them to look like somebody that you could, um, they have distinctive enough features that they stand out, but that, that they're not too far from what people look like so that, so that people aren't turned off by it or it seems too um, alien. But we, uh, even when we're doing animals, like you know, a different kind of animal or a monster, um, we're still looking for things that humans find uh, appealing and recognizable. But you can start to see there's a, these basic shapes that are starting to come through. And what I was saying earlier, this um, trying to get some very strong lines here that complement each other forms that, that go narrow, forms that go wide. Butch also has kind of a, almost a broken nose going on. So I'm going to give him that right now. There's a number of studios, animation studios as well, 
that uh, they don't do many sculpts, um, if, if any. And I was mentioning earlier, we think it's important. And uh, when I first started at Pixar, I didn't know how much work there actually would be. Uh, I wasn't sure how committed they were to sculpture, and they just stayed the entire time. And I, I, think, uh, I think most of us believe that in the end, it's made a difference in, in how our characters end up looking. Plus, you know what? A lot of people, a lot of the animators, a lot of people that come and even visit Pixar, we'll have people from Disney that want to come and see what we're doing. And sculptures make a really good way to show off a character and to inspire people. And it's really important. We want to keep everybody excited about it all the way through. And uh, there's nothing like having something you can hold in your hands and turn and see in real life. Let's see, I'm gonna give him a, a little mouth on this side too. earlier, sculpture starts very early in the process. We're considered part of development. Um, and what's cool about the good dinosaur is that we're still working on it. So while you guys are here you know, looking at this stuff, this is a film in progress. And uh, the work I did when I did the original Bush, Bush which you're going to be seeing soon, uh, it, it was a year ago, over a year ago, that I finished. So once that was done, we're he goes on and visits the studio and is on various people's desks. And I go on to other films. So sometimes I'll be, uh, I'll be two, three films out um, when, when something that I've worked on is in the theaters. start giving him just a little bit of uh, his eyebrows, more, more detail on his eyebrows. So, it's been announced, but I don't know if you guys have seen it. We actually talked about it here, but he's being played by Sam Elliott. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and Sam Elliott, just like how we imagined him, is this kind of, you know, sun, sun-baked, leathery, uh, squinting, Clint Eastwood kind of cowboy, and so we gave Bush the same kind of qualities. So, so there we I'm using 
using a very big tool that we were doing detail. Most of the time I don't get to, uh, I don't finish off the face before I've done like the rest of the body because I want the whole thing to work together. But sometimes I do. Sometimes I do it just like I'm doing now. Um, a lot of times that's because it's just fun. I don't want to stop working on the face. I figure if I see the face I know who he is and the body can follow. Um, sometimes it's just I, I, um, I need to see the face. I need to know uh, what he's going to look like. But the longer you can keep it abstract and rough, the better. Because then that's all you're thinking about is those big forms and how important they are to, to conveying the character. And then the details are just icing. You know, the details just add more and more interest. So Bush has some big nostrils too. missing ingredient in, in this that I would come to later is that often, um, just like the eyes, I was telling you the eyes uh, that we put in the sculpts are these uh, polyurethane casts. Um, I also will often make teeth and claws out of hard material, and uh, like, like an epoxy putty, and then I'll, I'll attach them either to the armature or I'll just start shoving them into the clay. And Bush, he's a T-Rex, so he has lots of teeth. So we got him to a stage not that different than this, um, make sure those forms were working and then we started jamming in the teeth and it really helped bring him to life uh, as a T-Rex. Enough of the face, I'm just going to do a little bit more on the body and then I'll show you how it actually turned out. I want to leave time for you guys to be able to ask questions so we can talk about stuff. This uh, armature started out exactly like the previous one, but since then I added epoxy, added these little toes, T-Rex have, let's see, these little back toes, you see them on birds too. Birds are dinosaurs. But everything needs to be supported. Sometimes. I 
time to just slap a huge chunk of clay on there and start pushing it through. He looks so different when he's got skinny legs, but like I said, you want as much room to make changes as you can, so you want the armature to be as small as possible, uh, but deliver all the strength and shape. I think we're actually running out of time, and well, I mean, time for me to get the other one up. So I'm going to go to the next stage, and then we can just talk about the finished one. separate process so I didn't I didn't do that in these because it would just take a while but in this case we made it we wanted to make it so that he could also be removed so he can he can come off of this rock base I think I'm gonna leave him on just because I have clay all over my hands and I don't want to hurt this thing so this is um, the reason this is gray and not the color of the clay earlier is because this is a polyurethane cast so when we are certain that we're done, or at least we're certain enough that we want to uh, use what we have, then we will get it cast. And so now it's, it's very hard. People can handle it, and there's no problem. If they were handling this stuff, and it, if it bumped into a wall, or even worse, if it got destroyed, if someone was carrying it down the stairs and it fell, it, it was a one of a kind. And so we'd have to start all over again. And uh, in this case, we can actually make multiple ones of these. This is, um, you know, if something happened to it or we need to send something to someone or, or more than one person in the studio needs them, we can keep making copies. Um, there's, a, there's a molding and cast process. I don't know how much you guys know about that. But you can see how much thicker he's gotten everywhere. He's also full of scars. Uh, one of the cool things about the film was that we can actually bring stuff in with, with Butch that happened with real... Uh, T-Rexes, or at least T-Rex relatives. Uh, one story, uh, let's see, should I tell this story? Maybe I should, I'm gonna leave something out. Because uh, I just realized we want to save this for you, so I won't say anything else. Anyway, he's very scarred up, and there's lots of evidence that that T-Rexes fought all the time. And, and most T-Rex skeletons that have been found, most T-Rex skulls, have bite marks somewhere from another T-Rex. And sometimes it's just, it, we just think it was just love play, basically. They're just very mouthy animals, because they're not really serious. It's like, it's like a couple of them are wrestling around, like dogs or ferrets might do. Maybe it wasn't play all the time, but, you know, and sometimes it's much more serious. But, uh, but it inspired us to do some things. Um, let's see. Five total? Five total? Oh, we got two. Okay, good. Um, maybe I'll talk about some other cool stuff. Some of the details we put into this, like these these little s scales that you see, the, these big pads, those are things that you'll see on birds. You see them on crocodiles too. And there's been a few cases where we pulled out T-Rexes and their relatives where um, they, you can see this stuff in the fossil, the skin was preserved. And it was really cool and we wanted to have it. Um, and, and they really are very much like birds. Uh, it's just that they are much bigger and they don't have feathers. Well, actually, it's very possible T-Rexes did have feathers. We don't have evidence for that yet, but um, there's a lot of other related species that we have found feathers for. But for our movie, we didn't want them to have feathers. It didn't seem like a cowboy thing to do, so. Um, 
Maybe I will take them off the base. Let's see. Just so you guys can see some stuff. I have to get them up. Well, maybe I won't. <laughs> Doesn't seem to want to come up right now. I'm going to leave it alone. But uh, we could, and maybe we should go into Q&A now if you guys would like to go down that road. So would you guys be ready for us to do some Q&A? Get a mic to these two people. So I'm just going to leave them up here and 